Good afternoon. What I'm going to share is very simple. And uh, we're going to spend less than one hour because there will be some practice. The talk is about 30 minutes long. And you may never be the same again. Uh, but before we start, I would like to show you a video. And the purpose of that video is to ask for us to ask ourselves, how well do we know the Bible? Now, we know there are many fake news. And this is probably one of the fake news uh, that we have. Fake news, but it's a, it's, a, it's a video of the president of South Africa, the real president. But he just got kicked out about one or two weeks ago. And uh, he is trying supposedly to read Genesis 1, chapter 1. In the beginning, God created. So let's see, look at this. Genesis 1. Verse 1, in the beginning, in the, in the beginning, in the beginning, yeah, in the, in, in, uh, in the, in, in the beginning, yeah, in, 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 in the beginning, in the beginning, Okay, I think you got the point. And for those who are speaking, if you run out of things to say, you can also do this. <laughs> All right. So the point is, there is this website and the app called Gut Questions, which has over 5,000 questions and 5,000 answers. So you can use that to disciple people. And if they read one question a day, it will take them 15 years to read all the questions that are answered biblically. Then, of course, everystudent.com has a lot of good materials also. And if you want to know what God is doing with this card that you just got, go to Facebook and then go to Gift of God. You will see dozens, if not hundreds, of young people, old people, children sharing the gospel. This is what we're going to talk about, about one-verse evangelism. How many of you are using one-verse evangelism to share the gospel? Oh, almost half of you. That's good. So this is just a revision of what we are doing with the one verse evangelism. But let's read this. Success in witnessing is an important and essential first step in the process of making disciple making disciples. And one more time. Success in witnessing is simply taking the initiative to share Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and leaving the results to God. Many of your church members are afraid to share the gospel because they feel they will be embarrassed. But if you inculcate this thought into their mind, that our job is to take the initiative and then leave the result to God, then they will not feel embarrassed. There's no need to do that. Then they will always take the initiative. Got it? Yeah. All right. Now, let's see First Peter 3.15. It says there, let's read, But set Christ apart as Lord in your hearts, and always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks about the hope you possess. First, the Lord must be in our heart, not just in our mouth. Second, we should be ready to answer. Answer what? People who ask. Now, you know, Blackaby had a teaching before called Experiencing God. He said, Jesus said, I, 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 the Father is still working. I see what he's doing, and I join him in his work. So whenever people start asking about God or Jesus, and Je Bible says, no one can come to Jesus unless God is the one that's drawing. So if anybody start talking about spiritual things, we know God is working in the heart. So our people need to go and join them. And to answer not just to, to everybody, anybody, not just the Catholic or the near Christian, but even the antagonistic one, you know, the people that you are reaching out in the fields outside, atheists and from other religions. So we should be able to do that. So why do we do that? Now, what do you give to someone who has everything? What do we give God who has everything? If you want to give somebody something, we should give them something that makes them happy, right? What makes God happy? First Timothy 2, 3, and 4, let's read. God, our Savior, wants all people to be safe and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So if we join that work of making people come into a knowledge of the truth, that's going to make God very happy, right? And if God is happy with you and I, how do you suppose he's going to treat us? Hmm? Very good, surprisingly. The other reason why is this verse in Matthew 10, where whoever denies me, I will deny. Whoever acknowledge, I will acknowledge. 
When I was younger, I was thinking at that time our problem was with the communists, right? If the communists took over the Philippines, they said, well, you're going to re de deny Christ? Mm, no. Then we go to heaven. Now it's ISIS and people who will chop up your head. But how about acknowledging? Now you wait for the communists or ISIS to threaten you? If we are not sharing the gospel, then we are not acknowledging. But we start sharing the gospel, we are acknowledging him. And if we acknowledge him, he will acknowledge us. Another verse that I came across, which uh, in a way shocked me, this one in Matthew 12, 13. Uh, if I ask you, do you want to be against Jesus? Do you want to be contra to Jesus? Of course we say not. But Matthew 12, 30 and repeated in Luke eleven twenty three, 23, it says, whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. That means if we are not actively gathering, we are actually scattering. And if we are not with Jesus doing his work, we are in fact, in fact, he thinks, he thinks we are against him. Man, that is a scary thought, right? So that's why we need to motivate our people to share the gospel and we make it easy for them, right? So success in witnessing is simply taking the initiative. Now, I, my life or my service changed after I was trained in Evangelism Explosion 3. How many of you are trained in EE3? All right, about 10%, 20%. 16 weeks and we go out 15 weeks now it's 13 weeks and ee training is saying in a church in america typically half of the people are not born again so therefore they are training this half to share to this half that means in the church and if we are a church in america half of us are not going into heaven that is scary now you say no 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 we are we are more religious we are more uh, all right so 75 percent still one fourth of a church is still not going to heaven. Now, of course, not everybody is good evangelist. They cannot share, they are introvert, but they can at least be praying for them, giving trust, showing love, caring for them. And uh, if they are doing that, that is also okay. Uh, my, my brother is giving two million Bible every year for the last two, many years. This year they're giving three million. Next year they are giving four million. And uh, if 1% of that will be saved, that means 30,000 people are coming into heaven because of the Bible given. You say, oh, no, 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 there are fewer than that. Okay, 10% of that, still 3,000 people, still a lot. But if it is 10%, that will be 300,000 people going to heaven because of this guy uh, giving out so many Bibles. So, but if somebody is not doing anything, then it is a question we need to uh, check and ask ourselves. Now, I'm going to show you two videos, which, uh, if there are theologians around, you might question and even argue. And the video is about what happens if a person is not making disciples. And the other question is, how about lukewarm Christians? Right? Many, many people, especially the Chinese people, will tell, okay, you can be Christian, but, you know, just, just I know, slowly, slowly, don't, don't be too fanatic. Lukewarm Christians. All right, let's look at these two videos. Okay, it's uh, David Platt. Are you sure you are a disciple of Christ? Listen carefully. Maybe one of the reasons so many people in the church aren't making disciples of all nations is because they're not really disciples in the first place. You think about Jesus and his disciples from the very beginning to the very end, making disciples was in the DNA of this thing, right? To be a disciple involved making disciples. Follow me, Matthew 4, and I will, what? I'll make you fishers of men. Very end. Go, make disciples of all nations. As those disciples were standing on that mountaintop, do you think that they had to be cajoled into going? No. And Jesus had to rein them in. Say, the last thing we need is you guys out there alone. Just wait for the Spirit. Peter, you'll blow this thing from the stop. Start. Just wait. You hear that? People who are not making disciples, maybe they are not even disciples, believers in the first place. This next one is Francis Chan. He was being interviewed. What do you think about lukewarm Christians? Revelations 3.16. Because you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. You do take that injunction in Revelation quite seriously, this idea that God will spit out mm. a lukewarm Christian. Yeah. Um, many people may feel uncomfortable with that, you know, well, 
what about grace? What about the fact that it's not about what we do? It's yeah. it, God accepts us on the basis of what he's done for us. Absolutely. How, how do you kind of balance that? Yeah, but, but when you look at his grace, his grace is shown in changing us and making us like his son. Um, that passage, you know, it's interesting, even that phrase, lukewarm Christian, I don't, I don't see that in the scripture. He refers to these people as lukewarm, and he also refers to them as blind, naked, poor, wretched, pitiable. And he says, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because you're, you're lukewarm. Now, I don't see that as a description of a believer. So as are a you Christian. saying that if you are lukewarm, basically, you're not a Christian? That's what I see in Revelation 3. I don't know how you can read that passage and call that person a Christian because a Christian's not going to be spit out of the mouth of God. I, I, I mean, that's quite a significant statement because it would suggest then that on the face of it, you see a lot of churches in America that are simply full of people who aren't actually Christians. Absolutely. It, because you, it's always been that way. Um, and, and Jesus explains, look, it's going to be the wheat and the tares. It's, it's going to be this group of people that grow together in the time of harvest. He's going to show who's for real. Um, you know, you, it's, from the beginning of that book, you see Israel, and yet he says not all of Israel, everyone who's, you know, Israel by nationality is true Israel. There, there'll be that remnant. There'll be those believers within that midst. And in the same way as there are millions and millions of people gathering in what we call these church buildings, um, those aren't all followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus says you can look at their lifestyles and you can tell that. First John says there'll be people who say that they know him, but he says, but because they don't obey his commands, he says they're liars. Um, it doesn't say, oh, you know, maybe they're believers that haven't changed yet. He just says, no, you can look at their lifestyles and, and know that they're liars and there's this wide road that leads to destruction and many will go through it but there's this narrow road that leads to life and few will find it and we want to we want to tell the world just like the world wants to say everyone's going to heaven there is no hell um and the church almost follows suit with that of saying we're all believers you know in this room because we all prayed a prayer at some point in our life i just don't see that in the scriptures Wow, you hear that? A Christian, a lukewarm Christian for him is not a Christian at all. Again, you can argue about it, but why take the risk, okay? So, how do we do that? Of course, there are many tracks, right? Bridge to life, steps to peace, EE, four spiritual laws, and then we have the one verse evangelism. Now, what we're going to talk about is a modified one verse evangelism. And how do we do it? Just do it. And how do we do it? Have the cart with you 24-7. Keep this card with you all the time. And then you'll be able to, you know, open to many opportunities. So it was first introduced in our church anniversary. I was a speaker. Instead of giving a sermon, I just gave half a sermon, and then they practiced doing it. The result is businessmen who never shared the gospel started sharing the gospel. Young people never shared the gospel started sharing the gospel. Even children are sharing the gospel. The parents of these two kids gave them the card, taught them how to do it, and say, the yayas are your responsibility. The mates in the house, you are responsible. So the two children are sharing it. So this is the card. Uh, if you look at it, one side, for the wages of sin is death. If you turn it around, it says that the gift of God is eternal life. Now, how can you use it? You can use it one-on-one. -on -one. That means giving it as a truck, although that's not ideal. But let's say you don't have time to share. Uh, what I do is I show them the card. What do you see? After some time, they see death, turn around, life. Uh, if, if they have no time to listen, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. At the back, there are explanation. Just look at it. If you want to receive this gift, pray this prayer that is there. And then, very important, tell them, if you have question, go to GodQuestion.org. That means if you never see them again, and if they remember the God question, they will have a source to, to continuously learn more about God. And you can do it in 10 minutes presentation, which is what we're going to show later on. Then we can do it one to few, let's say birthday parties, memorial services. You can use that card, give everybody a copy, share the gospel with it. You can give it, you can do it one to many. That means in the church, uh, public speaking, uh, etc. Here's a 
Pastor Dangan of the Presbyterian, doing it in the church, sharing it to the Sunday school. Here's a, a man who never shared the gospel. His church was trained, and he was meeting with these marine pilots. And look at him, share to all those people. And uh, I was invited to uh, the Manila Police Department for a flag raising. The general is going to be there to promote something. I was just there to witness. Halfway on the way, I got a text. Uh, Dr. Liuson, the general is not coming. You are the main speaker. <laughs> it's good I have the cards with me. So I give the cards to them, and they share the gospel using the card, and then invite them to receive Christ, and they raise their hands. Then I told them, look, we are police officers. So when we surrender our lives to God, we have to raise both hands, surrender. So you see all of them. <laughs> so you can do it with a card, very easy. All right? Now, one of our young, men, young church members, she asked for 4,000 copy uh, cards. I said, what are you going to do with it? Oh, I'm in the school. We have many t t students. We have parents. And we share. So she texted that grade six level, all done. Shared to all of them. No picture allowed, children. And then a few days later, when I was speaking in the school, she texted, all grade seven done, all grade eight done. <laughs> so while I was teaching them how to do it, I told the other teacher, you better hurry up. Otherwise, all the fruits are going to be gathered by this Michelle. All right, here was December. Uh, went to buy Barong. My, my wife was paying while she was paying. Shared the gospel with them. They received it. Uh, I was in the airport going into the lounge. And this girl will not let me in. She said, no, it's full. I said, no, it's OK. No, there's no more room to I don't need to cheat. I just want to stand and drink. No, sir, cannot be. So, because they were renovating the lounge, so it's only half, so very small. I was there five minutes, and I said, oh, OK. So I pulled out the card, shared the gospel with her. She received the card. <laughs> she received the gospel. She's from the local Church of Christ, you know. Uh, Hong Kong, in the restaurant, don't know how to order the food. I was looking around, oh, how is it? Uh, how is it? How is that? Oh, and these two sp spoke English. One of them is a Christian, one of them is not. Shared a little bit. In Hong Kong, we went shopping, sharing, shopping, sharing, shopping, sharing, shopping, sharing, shopping. I bought this ball pen from him. Then I went down, went down ground floor. I turned back, went back to him. Turn the card. Have you heard of the gift of life? Da, 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 da. In the end, he received the gift. He was so happy. He said, "Oh, I've heard of the, this when I was in, uh, in, in, in as a young, young, young boy, and it's good you share this again." So maybe a re okay. Here's uh, at the airport. This OFW guy was uh, from in London for three, 30 years. Coming home, plane was delayed. Sitting, sitting beside me, shared the gift with him. He received it. Man, arrived in Manila. There's this man who is not the smartest guy in the world, <laughs> but he, he, he was doing the luggage for me. Share the gospel, he received it. Manila Shangri-La Hotel, no, some of you mission field, you know, going to all of those difficult countries. My mission field is Makati Shangri-La Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm called to that. Here, uh, my driver, after lunch, I gave him the parking ticket, he was going down to get a car. Five minutes, I shared to this girl, and she received it. Uh, I was uh, having lunch with somebody. I told him, you go ahead. I want to finish my coffee. Actually, after he left, my purpose is to talk to these girls. So all of these three shared, received. One of them received it earlier, two others uh, on this occasion. He was introduced to different Christians. Uh, this is a Christian. This is a seminary president, uh, uh, Vice Dean Pala. He, re he got born again. Uh, not, 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 not there. Uh, many years ago. <laughs> many years ago. So introduced other pastors from other churches. Uh, so, one of our young men that November, he heard me teaching like this, and he was sharing something two, two days later, he shared to 20, 200 people. So how do we do that? Very simple, get trained and practice. Practice is the most important. So what do we share? One verse, Romans 6.23. Alright, let's read together. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This Tagalog, ready, go. Salanan, kapatayan, gunit, walang bayat, lop, Diyos. Ay buhay na walang hanggan kay Kristo Jesus, ating Panginoon. Alright, now half of you are sharing this, you know what happened. Traditionally, at the end of the sharing, you end up with this, right? You got a piece of paper, you got a napkin, and you start drawing this, you draw, write the verse, 
you draw one man, God on one side, circle wage, talk about wage, circle sin, talk about sin, circle death, talk about death, but then circle free gift, talk about free gift, circle God, talk about God, circle eternal life, talk about eternal life, and you end up with that picture a while ago, right? But how often do you get a piece of paper? How often do you have a napkin? Many times you don't have. So, and then you talk about Jesus, do you want to stay on the left side, you want to go to the right side? And that's how they receive, all right? And I don't know how many percent is your success rate with this, but with this card, it's almost 100%. It's, it's unbelievable. You, you think you are doing something wrong, that almost everybody, I think everybody will receive this gift. All right, so this is how it goes. What's the process? First is how's the process of sharing the gospel? And this applies to everything. First is we make friends, right? And you go chit chat, talk, 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 talk. Then you go deep chat. Sometimes they talk about problems, right? They open up their hearts. That's a deep chat. When there's a deep chat, you pray for them. Offer to pray for them. This is based on Ezio Boso's prayer evangelism. Uh, he's coming here. What he does, you make friends and uh, tell them, and then they start telling you things, and you pray for them. When you meet them again, oh, my problem was answered because you prayed. Oh, what happened? Then you can share the gospel. If, if nothing happened, the prayer answered, not answered, you pray for them again, and then eventually you make friends. So that's, that's the making friends part. And Ezeb also has written other books. Also, Ecclesia, he's going to have a seminar tomorrow about Ecclesia. All right, always be prayerful. Now, the sharing part is very easy. Ask, explain, ask, and explain. So how do I ask? I ask them, um, have you heard of the gift of God? Uh, most of them will say no. Then I said, do you have, I show them the card. And once they recognize the death, they recognize the life, and you do this up and down, up and down, you see the eyes get bigger and bigger, and they really wanted to have that card. Then I ask them, do you have five minutes, 10 minutes? Do you want me to share this? Yes. If no, then you give them the card, read the verse, say goodbye. If they have time, you ex and then you can also ask, how many percent are you sure of going to heaven? If, you, if we just ask yes or no, you know, sometimes it's very hard to answer. And most Catholic will probably say, oh, 50%, 60%. That's, that's how they, they mostly answer. So how many percent are you sure to you go to heaven? Don't have to talk even about that. Then what you do, you explain the gift of God, Romans 6.23. Then you ask them their question, which I will show later on. And then you explain about the one verse. They can look at it, explain about God question, uh, etc. You can also explain, if there's time, about by grace alone, by faith alone, by Christ alone, by Bible alone, for the glory of God alone. All right? That can be done also if there are time, if there is time. So the shortest version, as I mentioned, is just to read the verses to them and tell them to read it themselves. And the longer version is the 10 minutes, okay? So this is, there are 20, uh, I mean, 20, 20 words. The whole verse is 20 words. And we explain all of this. So, how do we do? So, let's say I show it. Right? They saw it. You have 10 minutes? You want me to explain? All right. Yes. Okay. Here. Four. In the Bible, when it says four, that means very important. So, pay attention. Listen up. Four. First, they are already interested with this. Four, important. They, you catch the attention again. Then, I will say uh, wages. And this the one verse presentation. How do you feel if your boss don't pay you wages? I know Filipinos are very mabai. Oh, you are angry, right? Yes. Because you know you do something, you deserve something. Three sentences, finish. And the way we live our life, we are going, God is going to give us wages. Death, a sin. Wages of sin. What is sin? Uh, EE presentation. If you just three, sin three times a day, that's 1,000 a year. If you live until 80 years old, that is 80,000. Can you imagine if you just have 80,000 parking tickets long? Have you heard of the Ten Commandments? Uh-huh, Ten Commandments. Uh, Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5, refer them to that. So they were, and then I will ask them, how do you feel if somebody, you see somebody with their new cell phone, new iPhone, with a new car, with a new, how do you feel? You feel jealous, envious? Yeah, that's commandment number 10, do not covet. Have you ever told a lie? Mm, yes, of course, we are all liars. That's commandment number nine. Have you ever stolen anything? Uh, most of them will say yes. Some who say no, I will ask them, mm, music, DVD, ball pants? Ah, okay. 
So we are all thieves. That's commandment number eight. Have you ever committed adultery? Uh, most of them will say no, but some of them will say yes. Some of them will say yes because they are not listening. So if they say yes, say, you, you sure? You no, know, sometimes the, the Filipinos, right? They are blank and they are, yes, yes, yes. Adultery? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, but Jesus said if you look at a person with lust in your heart, then you have already committed adultery. Commandment number seven. Next, have you ever murdered? No, 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 very fast. No, no. But Jesus said if you are angry with somebody, you have already committed murder. Okay, so how many are we already? Five, six? Next, have you ever jokingly or cursingly say, oh my God, Jesus Christ? Uh huh, that's taking the name of God in vain, commandment number three. Next, have you ever bowed before a statue, image? Right? Don't ever talk about idolatry, idolatry, all over. Have you ever bowed before a statue? Well, it's in the Bible, commandment number two. Exodus 20. Next, have you ever prayed to anyone except God? Pray to anyone. Uh, uh, I, yeah. Well, whoever you pray to is a God. And God said you cannot have any other gods before me. All right, this is getting serious. The only incident that I, that I have I was sharing to one of those two girls. When we reached this one, one of them just turned around and start, you know, not listening. But I continue sharing to the other. Eventually, both of them listen, and both of them receive, unless it's a Filipino. Yes, that's out of courtesy. So we never know. Pray before God. So that's Ten Commandments. So how many have we violated? Uh, eight. Seven. Eight. Then I will tell them that the wages of sin is death. Uh, before that, I will say, have you heard of the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. God created a very beautiful garden. And he says, you can eat everything you want except this one. And they ate. And because they violated one commandment, they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, forever cut off from God. One commandment. Tayo. Eight. Seven. How do you think God's going to treat us? So wages of sin is death. And because of sin, we need to repent, to be sorry, to change our ways, to turn from, turn to God, ask for forgiveness, or we will be punished. Wages of sin is death. Death means separation. And the ultimate separation is separation from God, who is life. God is good, we go to where is evil. God is love, there's no love. God is light, there's no light. So we are separated from God, and the Bible talks about the terror of the coming judgment. Then turn around, but there's a good news that's coming. The gift. Gift is free. If I give you this card, right, it's free. If I give you this, it's free, but it's paid by the giver. Now, I give you this as a small gift. If God were to give you a gift, then it's a big gift. And this gift is the gift of forgiveness, which is paid by Jesus Christ on the cross. Big God, big gift. In fact, it's so big, only God can give. And what is this gift? The gift of eternal life. So, kanina, I would do this. Death means God is life. Death means separation from God. Then now, at this point, I will say, so, if death means separation from God, what is life? Take some a few minutes to think about the word, okay? You repeat, if death is separation from God, what is life? Uh, reunited, back to, yeah, we get reunited with God again. That is life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. In means we must believe, come in, enter in, trust in, and invited in. Christ is the Messiah, right? But they are also false Messiah. How do you know? Read the Bible. This is the Messiah, this is the Christ, that's a false Christ. This is a real Christ, that's the Antichrist. Jesus, Son of God, the only way, the only mediator. Lord means Master, we do what He says. Many times we pray, we are asking Him to do. But we should do what He says. How do we know what He wants? Again, read the Bible. So two times we refer to the Bible for them to be there. So, that's the end of the presentation. So what I do, may I know your name? Bishop Kubos. Bishop Kubos. Sorry, I know you're Bishop. But... Rod, one day when we stand before God, 
do you want God to see on you a label called wages? Or do you want God to see on you a label called gift? Two seconds, there was a gift. Very fast. Say, if you want to receive this gift, we need to repent of our sins, ask for forgiveness. Here's this prayer. You need to pray from your heart. So either you lead them to pray or let them read it. After they pray that prayer, you ask them, do you pray that from your heart? Is that from your heart? Yes. Right? The Bible says, if you believe in Jesus, you have the right to become child of God. Right? In since you have this child, eternal life, you want to communicate with the Father, you pray. You want him to talk to you, you read the Bible. Okay. Then refer to GodQuestion.org so that they can continue the... Uh, no. So that's a prayer. It's from four spiritual laws, except the last sentence. Uh, empower me to obey, trust, honor, love you more and more day by day. If you want to add something else, you can ABC, you know, admit, believe, and confess. And then, after that is done... Uh, what I do is I give them the card. I say, this is for you. For you to remember today, you write your name and your date. You have to tell them it's card. Well, they will be afraid you sign something, they get it back. This is for you, but write your name and so you remember. While they are writing, you ask them, who else do you want to tell this good news to? Oh, my husband, my wife, my parents, how many? So whatever number they say, you give them at least double the number of cards. So, okay, here are five, here's 20. You share with them, ask them the question. And if they say yes, let them sign, then give them additional cards so they can share to another. So that means you are you know, step after step. And then, of course, take a picture, a uh, souvenir. And you say, take a picture. And when you take a picture, be, remember to include yourself also in the picture. And then post it to your Facebook, your Facebook, so that your friends, when they see one way home, you can explain to them. Post it also to the gift of God, one word, so that others, you will see others are posting, you post them to encourage one another. So, that's it. That's how it's done. Now, just to show you what was done last December after I had the car. We went to Dubai. We went on a cruise. And this is coming back from Dubai. This girl, Actually, Dr. Luson, are you from Makati? How do you know? Oh, our church. You helped our church before. My father is a pastor. So I gave her a medical card. Okay, uh, bahala ka na dito sa Dubai. We were in Marriott Hotel, coffee shop, Sharing, sharing. She's the manager of a Thai restaurant in Marriott. She received a... By the way, when you post it on your Facebook, don't say, this guy is a sinner, adulterer, and he's a drug dealer. <laughs> and he was so sad. He was crying and he received Jesus. Not, none of those. Just use the word receive. That means they receive Christ. If you are not able to share, just say, card was given. So two words, receive and given. That's, that's a code. This manager and she received it. Uh, this is a coffee shop girl, Dubai, duty free. All of them after buying nuts. This girl is helping us in the assistant Dubai. This girl, we were in, we stayed in Marriott, very expensive. So we have to eat in Jollibee, but uh, Bawi, I don't know. <laughs> so we were eating. They were talking, the two of them. So me and my wife got up to leave, and one of them said, "Ah, oh, happy New Year, sir." That was uh, New Year's New Year's Eve. I turned back, sat down. Have you seen this? Tuck, 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 tuck. Both of them received. Right? So again, here's uh, the chef of the ship, you know, big, the number one chef. So this is not just for ordinary people, even educated people. There's this African lady who is a tourist uh, with, with us. And in Dubai, they have this uh, global village where they have miniature of different countries, Pyramid, Eiffel Tower, uh, the Great Wall of China, and stuff like that. And so we were there. And there was this place where the Africans, and these two were there. A people, picture? OK. Picture? So we were left. I was about 20 steps. I told my wife, let's go back. I said, what country are you? Uh, Kenya. Are you, you know, cousins? Uh, no, which a Christian country. So I da -da -da -da, shared the gospel. And he was not listening. Uh, the girl was listening. But look. Towards the end, ooh, wow, both of them received the gift. <laughs> and on the other side were two other girls in another gate. Again, they receive it. And here we are. So this is what happened. Okay, as I mentioned, Shangri-La Hotel, so many of them. Rustan, we're buying things, cell phone, uh, my tailor, share, and they receive it. This is the, in the cruise, uh, the, the waiters and managers. 
Everybody. The chef again, the African. This is the two teachers in Dubai, uh, from Netherlands, I think. So we were in the souk, waiting for the bus. Two of them were there, sat beside them. What are you doing here? I'm teaching sports, he's teaching English. Maybe, uh, da, 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 da. They, both of them receive, right? Uh, okay, that's it. So this is how it goes. Now, that's all the teaching. But, yeah, good. Thank you, thank you. For, to God be the glory. <laughs> what I want you to do now is to practice, all right? You have each one card, right? So if you're a husband and wife, turn to the back. Don't talk to your husband or your wife. Uh, and then practice right now. And this is how it works. Uh, so different churches. This uh, Gospel Church of Manila, uh, they, they were trained on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Everybody is posting. And the pastor texted me and said, I need 10,000 cards. Our people are so active. Uh, Crossword Church, here. Yesterday, I heard from the pastor. Their members have shared the gospel, and 2,000 people have accepted Christ. And out of which, 400 are already in their small groups. That is within one and a half month from the time they got trained. Uh, Manila Polo Club, okay, these are the same. So, practice. Can we do it right now? If you are both ladies or both men, the younger one will share to the older person. All right, so if you want to make yourself younger, you start sharing. If it's men and women, the men will share. Okay, husband and wife? No, okay, so you can share to each other. Can we do it now? Okay, these are the points.